Um, so we'll move on now to the final two speakers of this session. Uh, we have two Mr. Browns. We have uh, Josh Brown and Christopher Brown. Um, so who, which of you is going up first? I'm starting and finishing, and Josh is the sort of uh, okay. filling of the sandwich, but Josh has the slides. <laughs> so, Josh. We're in the traditional brown clan garb of a shaved head and a beard. <laughs> and yes, and, uh, I like to think we are still Europeans, even though from the UK. And we don't have any flashing disco lights. I'm very disappointed in that, but I uh, can only apologize. Great. We can see your slides. You guys are all set. Okay, great. Right, we don't have disco lights, but we do have two positive people who are going to present their persistent pursuit of practically perfect peered partnerships at Peerdapalooza. So a um, bit of a tongue twister to start the session. Um, next slide, Josh, please. So as I said, I'm going to do an introduction um, and then Josh is going to talk more detail about this PID project we've been working on in the UK. And then I'm going to come back and give some um, plans for 2021. So the, this project has really come out from a, a roadmap that's been developed within, within the, the UK. And yes, we have been talking about PIDs at JISC and in the UK for quite some time. I should say I work for JISC and Josh is part of the More Brains Cooperative who's been working on um, the PID project at JISC. I'm not going into the details of what JISC does. There's a lovely website with lots of information on that if you want to find out. But at JISC we have produced recommendations, reports, and we've been involved in discussions with PID providers and various stakeholders for a number of years. But there's some examples here of um, sort of changes in the policy landscape from Plan S, GoFair, um, EOSC that have been sort of recognizing that PIDs are important and in some cases mandating their use. And PIDs are an enabler for open research. So um, Plan S specifically is a specific motivation, particularly when putting together workflows to support compliance. So yes, PIDs are important. I think we all know that. So next slide, Josh. So um, that's a picture of uh, Professor Tickell um, from the Open Access to Research Publications in 2018 came the recommendations that just should lead on selecting and promoting a range of unique identifiers, including ORCID, um, in collaboration with sector leaders and relevant partner organizations. Out of this came five priority PIDs, which Josh is going to talk about in more detail. And also that funders of research should consider mandating the use of an agreed range of unique identifiers as a condition of grant. So that's a very sort of short introduction to the project. But as I said, Josh is going to give some far more detail on, on the project itself. Over to Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Um, so just said, so one of the first things we did is we we, we developed our list of priority PIDs based on a series of workshops that we ran between 2017 and 2019. And one of the things we did, uh, which you can see on the screen here, is kind of look at what an ideal world workflow for gold open access publishing is the illustration you can see. So we started with real world workflows and pain points and covered two walls of a huge conference room with, with hundreds and hundreds of uh, post-it notes and then we kind of looked at where the problems were and how they might be able to be solved with um, an intelligent integration of persistent identifiers where they could act as a trigger and from that we were kind of starting to pull out what the priority entities were and where the integration points were and how that would enable information to flow through the system most effectively and most efficiently and saving admin overhead for publishers making it easy for funders to understand reporting um, yes, that's right, Pippi, it will be. Um, and there's a, there are various versions of this uh, diagram online as well, so don't try and read it now if it's making your eyes hurt. Um, but the five priority PIDs that came out for all of these various use cases were those for grants, projects, persons, organisations, and outputs. Now, these aren't the priority PIDs for all use cases, um, and obviously this is focused on open access uh, as a particular set of challenges 
Um, but actually what we found in our subsequent kind of validation work is that these five identifiers are a consistently high priority across most of the research communities that we've spoken to. Um, and we were deliberately inclusive around outputs as well, um, so that we could actually make sure that we were capturing links between data and articles and um, videos and samples and all kinds of different entities. Um, so we've done a bit of a bit more research since those looking at how these priority PIDs could actually be made to work most effectively for us. So I'll present a quick summary of some of those findings from that. So we did um, a series of focus groups. These were led by my colleagues, uh, Fiona Murphy and Phil Jones, who did a brilliant job of pulling a lot of very, very disparate conversations together. Um, you can see a link to their report in this slide. Um, but we pulled together quite an interesting group. But the major findings were that um, we need an under, a kind of a governance for this community engagement with um, PIDs at the national level. Um, it's not enough to expect everybody to have individual relationships with all of these identifier organisations. We need something to pull the community needs together. And it helps the PID providers to communicate with these communities as well as the community to communicate with the PID providers. Um, we should really be thinking about doing some serious interventions that show the value um, of these different identifiers interacting. Um, and that there needs to be some real, real strong leadership in the UK to actually make this happen and to keep momentum and to bring all of these conversations together. And to support that, you need a lot of outreach. So a lot of these um, conversations, so there are common, common, common confusions there like projects and grants are not the same thing. Um, a project that may not have a grant or it may have many grants. And similarly, a grant may not actually fund a project or it might fund several. So the understanding the differences between some of these entities is really important to get, help people get the most out of them. Um, the next piece of work we did that followed up on this was a survey. Um, again, there's a report there that li linked here. And the main findings were that the barrier, the biggest barriers to adoption are that the, but the technical burden and the costs of integration are higher than people are willing to pay. And the reason they're not willing to pay it is that the perceived value that PIDs deliver is currently too low. Um, and I think there's a related factor here, which is that metadata is unpredictable um, and inconsistent, and it needs to be more reliably maintained and updated to actually help to deliver the value that people are wanting to get. And you know, the value that people want is summed up in this slide here on the benefits. Um, they want better interoperability. That's interoperability within organizations, so within internal systems, but also with external systems as well. Um, that's to support better interoperability and more data reuse to actually really reduce the burden of some critical um, activities. And um, what the interesting thing to follow up on our five priority PIDs was that the respondents from this survey very, very strongly flavored three priority workflows for us to look at. So they were funding systems, content platforms, um, in which we're including repositories and publisher platforms, and institutional research information management tools, CRISs, and the like. So those systems are really, really important, I think, for us to look at. So this is, we're digging into some of those workflows now. So creating much more and more extensive versions of the diagram we showed a few moments ago. Um, but what we'd like to do now um, is just ask this audience for some suggestions to help us to kind of extend our work a little bit. Um, so if, you would, if, you would, if you've got another device, another browser window, another, another window available, um, if you could go to www.menti.com and put in the code 3491409, um, that would be brilliant. And what are, the, are there any other PIDs you think we should, we should really be looking at as part of our priority group for open access? Um, particularly, uh, excuse me, Josh. Sure. Uh, or... Or Chris, if you have that handy, could you drop that in the chat? Yep. Is that gone? And the code is 3491409. And the, the, the existing PIDs are for people. Yeah, people, uh, which we, for ORCID IDs, RAID identifiers for projects. Um, we've got grant IDs. Um, 
we've got so we've got projects, people, grants, organisations, and outputs. So if there are specific outputs that go beyond, say, the usual um, usual suspects of say data site DOIs or um, or DOIs for crossroads, yeah, these are great facilities. It's nice to see those coming up again. Equipment, kind of a related challenge. That's awesome. Um, these are really helpful suggestions. Keep them coming, guys. Software, I think, is a really important component of the output there. Thanks, Paul. Uh, conferences, now that's a challenge that's been appearing in some of the chat, chats today. These are real, these are awesome, thank you. Good to see, um, yeah, funding calls. That's an interesting one. That's really helpful. That's brilliant. So I'm just going to give you guys a couple of seconds to throw some more suggestions in there. Thanks, Chris. Um, so there's loads, loads of really helpful things. Data sets, I think we would include in outputs. And I guess we could say funder IDs are included in organizations. This is really kind of critical stuff. Um, oh, that's that's really helpful for the recommendation for the eye samples or in the chat there. That's really helpful. Okay, um, I'm just gonna say that's fantastic. Uh, thanks for putting those suggestions in. They're really helpful. Um, those kind of things are what we need to be looking at as we do our workflow analysis. So this is really actually helping our research. So sorry, it's a bit selfish. Um, so there's another factor here as well. So we've been looking, our project emerged from open access, but in, as part of thinking globally, we would like to be asking what other policy priorities could these identifiers or workflows be used to serve? Um, so where we're looking at this approach, if we, one of the things we're looking at is maximizing the value we get from our work. Um, so if there are ways that we could boost adoption, integration of these things, by um, output and impact analysis, that's really helpful, thank you. I think that's an increasingly global concern. Um, so any, any way that we could maybe serve, kill two birds with one stone, so to speak, is really helpful. It's a treaded ref, uh, that's the Research Excellence Framework in the UK, it's the national research evaluation um, exercise that takes place every six, seven years and costs a huge amount of money and takes a lot of effort. Um, so making that, <laughs> Uh, making that much more um, helpful would be brilliant. Um, no, thanks, Liz. Um, <laughs> diversity of academic contributions, that's a really interesting one. That is a really interesting one. Open data sharing policy, that's, yeah, brilliant. And we've got some time to work on that. Okay, these are all really interesting ideas. Yeah, that understanding, um, the but actually quantifying reduction on burden is something we're going to be looking at soon. So we'll talk about that in a little while. Um, usage of facilities and equipment, yep, that's brilliant. These are all really helpful. These are all really, really helpful. Yes, ideally those, those, those ideas should help to reduce the need. I mean, I'm gonna say reduce, but not remove, because one of the things we're trying to do is if you can maximize data reuse and automation and harvesting, then you actually want researchers to come along and provide some context. There's always a bit of narrative around the impact or the value of a piece of work that, that can be helpful to report. Brilliant. Yeah, so we've, I think we've got those. That's awesome. These are great. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going I'm to stop there and skip us on because I'm conscious of the time. There is a chance. We, we are trying to save some time for questions at the end as well. So um, don't worry. We'll, if you put any other questions in the, in the question panel, we'll do that. So one of our big pieces of work that we've recently done is actually looking at how we could bring the community together. So there was a discussion of a consortium and our feeling here was that the consortium if it's going to affect work on lowering those barriers to adoption the technical barriers and reduce the cost um, we actually want a support consortium so orchid and data site have consortium memberships um, crossref has its sponsoring networks um, and obviously things like raid and raw haven't developed business models yet but support is where we could come together and club together to actually deliver make sure that there was a dedicated national support help desk so boost the existing support that um, people get so like the british library data site team or the gisc orchid team in the uk um, so we started to look at what the value propositions for such that for, 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 for this consortium could be and at a high level here we've talked about um, pulling out some of the, these really sort of central value propositions. So a cross-cutting one, which I think speaks to that reduction in burden suggestion earlier, are efficiency gains. 
Um, but we felt for funders, the primary one is meeting policy demands. That might be, again, the reduction in burden. It might also be something like an open access policy. Um, these might be imposed within the funder or they might be imposed by a government or similar organization on the funder. For institutions, we felt that the core, 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 the core benefit there is better research management and support. Now that might be practical support for researchers or it might be strategically managing um, your research portfolio. Um, for content providers, it's simplifying and serving metadata needs. So that means more efficiently being able to create funding acknowledgements in articles, for example. And critically for researchers, it's a reduced administrative burden. So these are really high level. And we've, we've followed those up by digging into more example use cases across our research um, so that we could kind of start to kind of um, test out those value propositions and see if this worked. And based on these, um, we've kind of come out with a model, um, which is that we should be focused, again, mentioning technical support. Um, and if we had, if we could build a consortium which was totally accessible across the whole country, we could actually provide a dedicated technical support from a range of organizations to every research organization in the UK. And the idea there is we see the money that we're spending across the sector as a national investment in identifiers. We want to maximize the return on that so that people keep investing and they keep using these systems. So to make sure that we have, have an absolutely solid case for all of those investments, the next step is to, to, is to conduct a rigorous cost benefit analysis um, of PIDs. And I think our model there is that it will that will provide a lot of a lot of value both within the UK and internationally to PID users and to, uh, to, to PID providers. And I'm going to pass back. Oh no, there's one last slide here. The last thing we do is to make sure we oversee that is we're setting that we've set up a national research identifier national coordinating committee. Now that will liaise internationally and with the UK government, but it operates at a strategic level and it supports and liaises. Um, more operational concerns like actual PID providers um, and existing PID con consortia or communities of practice. Um, and the key thing there is this actually monitors progress towards our goals and actually it monitors access and the equitability of access to make sure that everyone can get the PIDs they need for their research. Um, so I'll pass back to Chris now for, uh, to wrap this up. Thanks, Josh. Um, yeah, so I'm going to a few slides here really what we're going to um planning for 2021 and as josh has already mentioned there's a the cost benefit analysis is the first piece of work really um which is going to start uh quite soon well um next week um, or a couple of weeks so um yes just a few highlights from that really that the um there's gonna be a landscape review to look at existing work and examples and then identify pain points in existing workflows other things about data exchange mapping, the scale distribution, benefit quantification, um, and some modeling. And also looking at edge cases, unsupported needs and gaps as sort of community impact analysis. Um, the the key thing I think is that the, the final report is to be you know, shared with the community because it's gonna be a, an open re report. Um, the findings will be open and shared. Uh, it's not just for JISC, but it's to influence the um, the work as we're moving to this consortium model and the rink. So part of this work in 2021 is obviously moving to this consortium model, which is going to maximize access to and the utility of pri the priority PID services in the UK. Um, I'd also want to stress that the consortium's role is to provide enhanced technical and community support in order to lower the barriers to PID adoption. I think that's an important point to, to stress. And as part of the, the, the uh, governance structures we have we're having the research identify a national coordinating committee to um to, to provide that that governance structure and community accountability can next slide thanks but we want to lead by example at JISC so rather than we're not just recommending the use of priority PIDs um well we are we're doing that as well obviously it's an important part of what we're doing but just runs a number of services and we want to practice what we preach so we'll be looking at integrating uh these priority PIDs into our services there's the list there is really a wish list i mean i'm not guaranteed that we'll get everything done within 2021 but that is what we're aiming for we're trying to sort of think aim be, be ambitious um, and this is the full list of what we would like to do in 2021 we're at the early stages of planning that out so we're 
taking a sort of you know approach for developing the sort of the quick wins where we can integrate some of these priority pins in some of the key services that we provide you know where it's going to be a sort of a, a longer job you know it's it's down to you know having the resources to get that work done but we have started the planning and this is sort of like a wish list of what we, we would like to achieve within JISC so rather just issuing recommendations to the community we're actually trying to um, like I says there lead by example and to practice what we, we preach next slide so there's an international element to our work. I mean, the, the project is the UK PID for open access project, but as always with precision identifiers in the UK, it's, it's you know, you have to view it from an international perspective. So the, the work we are doing, you know, is, is relevant internationally. So the cost benefit analysis will provide evidence of um, the value proposition for IPID integration for the UK, but hopefully as well for internationally, and that the methods used will be the benefit and to the community and be able to be re reused. Um, so hopefully that's going to be beneficial beyond the UK. Also developing a national and international unified and coordinated user group collective action plan and a program plan for these international engagement activities and partnerships. Obviously we do engagement through the Pidapalooza, the, um, there's the Research Data Alliance as well, which I'm going to mention in a minute. Um, so there's community activities, so it's promoting the work we do and um, engaging actively with the international audience. The RAID project, and I don't know if you were at the session earlier, um, talking about RAID, um, we're going to be developing a business planning and roadmap for UK RAID registration agency, and that could be used as a model for other countries. And finally, the Research Data Alliance. We've just submitted a birds of a feather proposal. The, the, the deadline was yesterday, so that's gone in. I don't, I can't tell you if it's been accepted because it was yesterday. Uh, that's 20th to 22nd of April. This is National PID Strategies Opportunities for Collaboration Alignment. So we, we're actually um, working with uh, with the UK, Netherlands, Canada, Australia and Finland looking to assess the potential benefit of collaboration alignment in the development and implementation of future national initiatives. I know there's a PID interest group within the RDA but we're looking at potentially setting up another interest group looking at um, uh, those strategies. So that's really it. Um, I was trying to look at questions but I don't think there's any other questions. Uh, There's no. Uh, Go ahead. I'm not sure we've, how much time we've got, but um, there's one there about is it really possible to provide nationwide technical support if there's a wide range of platforms to maintain? Um, that's a that's an that's a difficult question. I think it's that's one of the reasons that we're looking to figure out what scale of the benefits might be and what level of investment might work to do that. Um, the idea there is that if the cost savings are high enough across the national network, then it's worth having quite a big team to work on this. Um, so it's understanding what scale that support might be. Um, I think there are ways we can um, help with the training, help with the documentation, support the existing um, PID, 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 provision, PID providers and their support networks as well, and help to extend that so that we can help to lower the costs and lower some of those barriers. Um, one of the things we'll do about quanti quantifying the reduction of burden is build on work um, with things like um, uh, the stuff the Portuguese did um, with the PT Chris uh, network, where they quantified the, the, the volume of, say, for example, article citations that were shared and reused through PT Chris and assigned that as a value in time and subsequently financially. Um, we're finalising the membership of the rink, Chris. Um, thanks for that question. And Laurie, we're bringing on board professional associations. Um, they're, they're critical pathway for us in um, being able to actually bring on research representation and input to that process. So um, folks like the Royal Academy, uh, Microbiology Society and others, um, particularly in the context of our work. Yeah, there was something that was raised, wasn't it? As getting research, making sure we have that research representation, which can be quite difficult if you um, include every sort of uh, society. But we are trying to endeavouring to, to include that. So, yeah, um, but yeah, the, 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 the making sure that there's actually a lot of coverage there and um, that we're liaising internationally, I think, is part of the, the big thing at the moment for the community building and the network. 
as well. Um, I think that bringing in lessons and, and in, insights from other countries is a really critical part of what we're trying to do. And I think that's it, isn't it? Uh, there was a question about uh, reduction of burden, unless you've already covered that. Um, I think I covered it. It was talking about extending the model that the Portuguese did. So we're yeah. going to we're going to look at um, the time people are spending on particular tasks and the volume of data that it's that it, that's exchanged nationally. So, um, say for example, the amount of work that goes into reporting to the national funder, um, and how, how you know how many um, how many various citations, other things like that, which could be reused. So, if you were pulling that from an ORCID record or from a local Chris network or something, or from a Ray profile or something like that. Um, so, if we say it takes two and a half minutes to put in a citation, you can kind of start to, and you have a sense of the scale of data exchange. You can start to figure out how much time and cost is used for replica, you know, for repeat, repeatedly entering that data again and again in other systems. And that's our target because that tells us what the scale of the saving will be. All right. Any other questions? We have about one more minute. But certainly, it, I mean, we need to squeeze every second out of Pitapalooza, don't we? Um, we? We can answer them on Slack if anything comes up. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, we can, I know it's party time now, isn't it? So I don't want to die. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it sounds like, you know, from the the previous presentations, I think some of our European friends have, have gotten a head start on party time. Uh, I am dropping into the chat the link for uh, the next session, which is back in track one. It's party time. Uh, we'll draw this session to a close. I want to thank our speakers during this program, uh, this segment of the program. Uh, <clears throat> if you want to listen to the recording, uh, if you come back to this link, so pitapalooza dash. 2021 slash eight. Uh, that will be th where you can get the recording of this session. And uh, we'll get all of the presentations up online as well. So with that, thank you all. Uh, it is time for a break. I hope you all enjoy it. Uh, should be a fun uh, pub quiz, uh, pub party in the next segment. So uh, thank you all. And the party continues. I'll see you all in a bit.